Hi, I'm Pat Keown, a research analyst at Lipper, and I'm here to speak to you about fund flows for the week ended Wednesday, September 3rd. During the week, the U.S. broad market indices hit new record highs. The S&P 500 index hit its 32nd record high close for the year as it overcame continued geopolitical unrest in the Middle East as well as the Ukraine, along with the, the fears at home that the Federal Reserve may raise interest rates sooner than anticipated. Moving on now, let's turn our attention to the actual fund flows. For the week, we saw net outflows of approximately $3.3 billion. This broke a three-week string of consecutive inflows uh, for, the, for the broader fund market. Let's turn our attention now to our macro groups. Equity mutual funds saw $1.7 billion in outflows. Taxable bond funds had $1.3 billion in inflows. Muni funds took in just over $300 million, while money markets saw almost $8 billion flow out of their coffers. Let's take a co closer look at our equity mutual fund category now. As stated previously, the, the category saw $1.7 billion in outflows last week. Breaking that, up, breaking that out a little bit more, we saw that non-domestic equity funds took in $400 million, while domestic equity had one, excuse me, $2.1 billion in outflows. The majority of those outflows came from funds in Lipper's large cap core classification. Uh, they had approximately $1.1 billion in outflows, while one fund within that category, the GMO Quality Fund, accounted for almost $600 million of those outflows. Taking a closer look at both the large cap core category as well as the GMO fund, we, we don't see a trend here. This is, this is a new occurrence overall for the, for the year to date. The large cap core category has just $2.4 billion in outflows, while the GMO fund does not have much more in net outflows than what we saw last week. Well, so this, this will bear watching in the next few weeks to see if the trend continues, but there, we don't see one as of right now. Let's take a closer look at equity ETFs now. For the week, the group took in $6.2 billion. This is its fourth consecutive week of inflows. In past weeks, we saw, the, we saw that the inflows were concentrated, that a handful of funds, excuse me, a handful of the ETFs were accounting for the majority of the inflows. That's not the case this week. It seems to be more spread out. Uh, the, the two main players we saw on the buy side were, again, the, the Spider S&P 500 ETF had $1.4 billion in net inflows, while the, I, and I shares, uh, the iShares Core S&P mid-cap took in $1.1 billion as well. Let's take a closer look at our taxable bond mutual fund category now. As stated previously, they had $1.3 billion in net inflows last week. Uh, this is their fourth consecutive week of inflows. Um, Intermediate investment grade debt funds accounted, they, we saw the biggest inflows into, into that group. The core plus bond category took in about $330 million, while the core bond fund category took in about $250 million. On the sell side, uh, we saw loan par funds uh, had $460 million leave their coffers last week. Let's take a closer look at our taxable bond ETFs now. The group had $1.6 in net outflows last week. This snapped a 10-week string of, of consecutive net inflows. Curiously, uh, the, the bulk of the, the outflows uh, came from a, a, a four iShares Treasury ETFs, the short term, the one to three, the three to seven, the seven to 10 year, accounted for the lion's share with about $1.7 billion in, in, in outflows. While conversely, the iShares 20 plus year treasury product had the largest net inflow with $120 million. Let's move on to, to our muni bond fund category now. Munis took in about $330 million overall last week, the fourth consecutive week of inflows. National munis once again accounted for all the increase, taking in about $380 million. For the year to date, national munis are up $15 billion. Let's take a look at our last category now, money market funds. After four straight weeks of inflows, uh, the, the group had about $8 billion in net outflows last week. Uh, the main culprit here was taxable money markets as they had $9.1 billion in outflows. For the year to date, the taxable money markets are down over $112 billion. Well, that wraps up this week's report. Please join us here again next week where another analyst will be speaking about the, the, the week's activity and fund flows. Until then, if, you, if you'd like to take a deeper dive and take a closer look at the t data, please join us at our website, www.lipperusfundflows.com.